future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. This is On Air with Tony Sweet, your number one source for all things entertainment, exclusive interviews, and guests from TV, film, the Broadway stage, and your favorite musical artists of today. Talking shop is a given, but deep conversation is Tony's specialty. On Air with Tony Sweet starts now, exclusively on UBN Radio. All right, everybody. Thank you guys for tuning in to On Air with Tony Sweet right here on Universal Broadcasting Network. I'm Tony Sweet, your host. Carla Renata, I think she's in an audition or she's going to be here whenever the hell she feels like it. And uh, we will have her in studio hopefully shortly. But we are excited to have with us today. We have a very talented actor and I can't wait to talk to him because uh, I was once an All-American athlete in college. And so... <laughs> Another athlete to another athlete. We love talking sports. Well, it depends, I guess, what sports it is. But we have Donovan Carter in the house. You might know him from HBO's Ballers. Donovan. Hey, how you doing? What's up? Thanks for having me on, Tony. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. Now, uh, first of all, uh, Ballers is, uh, I know the guy that created uh, Entourage. Create, yes. Did he create this too, right? Yeah, Steve Levinson. Steve, yes, yeah, Steve. And so, when you were you ever a fan of Entourage? Yeah, I loved Entourage. It was a good show. I, yeah, I kind of caught it on late when I got uh, the part for the show. That's when I started watching it. And I, I fell in love after the first episode. And so, uh, so you had kind of a, a feel of what the flow was with Entourage. Do you feel that now that season two of Ballers? Do you think uh, it's similar in the flow of Entourage? A little bit. I mean, I. I I think similarities. Yeah, it's similar. Yeah. You can't compare to Entourage. Right, it's a right. great show. But yeah, um, guys I mean, are a pretty good show too. So. Yeah, yeah, we're we're getting up there. <laughs> we got a little ways to catch up, but it's the same type of style. We got the right. same, a lot of the same writers and directors. Oh, and that's great. A few producers. Actually, Steve Levinson, Doug Elin was a creative of Entourage. Yeah. Lev was a producer on Producer, there. right, right. But, um, and then Mark Wahlberg was on there, too. I love Mark. He's a great actor. Yeah, he's great. Great guy, period. Well, yeah. it's funny. You look back, to, you know, most of us know him from when he was a rapper. <laughs> and to think he grew from a rapper to such a talented actor and, I mean, a powerhouse in Hollywood, that's yeah. that's accomplishment in itself. Yeah, yeah. It just shows what hard work can do. It definitely right? pays off. Right? Yeah. All right. So you play Vernon Littlefield. Yes. Uh, so tell us, for the, a lot of people maybe not have HP, or haven't seen the show what tell us about vernon vernon he's a young guy he got a first season he got drafted uh pretty early um right out of college mm -hmm. you know three years and i went first first round got drafted got a lot of money like a lot of these athletes didn't know what to do with his right. money so right. spent a lot of it and the rock comes in and his character is spencer strassmore and, he, and he's a financial advisor mm -hmm. and he's trying to help him manage his money so when he retires he, um, you know, he has something saved, and he doesn't have to get a regular nine to five job. Oh, God, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> <laughs> so now, now working with The Rock, that must yeah. have been amazing. Yeah, it's a blessing. I mean, I, I remember watching him in wrestling when right. I was in elementary school. So another one, you know, that kind of jumped sports to uh, acting and done an amazing job. Exactly. Yeah. So just, I mean, it's been, it's really been a blessing because just to see where he came from, mm -hmm. we, you know, he came from the football background like myself, and to see where. He started and where he's at now has just been motivating and really been a dream come true because he's somebody who I looked up to right, since right. I was you know ten years old, just a baby. <laughs> All right, so let actually let's go back to the ten year old uh, Donovan. So uh, you grew up where? I grew up in the uh, San Fernando Valley. Oh, so you're yeah. you're local? Yeah, I'm local. Yeah, local guy. I was born in D.C. Came out here, lived with my dad for since I was eight years old, and, right. and been here ever since. It's, it's hard to leave LA, man. Oh, you know, I, I grew up in Kansas, so oh, you man. know, just a country boy. Yeah, yeah. But my mom grew up out here in Ventura. She born and raised there, and okay. so we used to come back here a lot. But I fell in love with California, and I've been here for almost for almost fifteen years now, and I feel at home. I mean, when you get out here and become a a resident of L.A. and California, Southern California, it is. It's very addicting with the weather and opportunities and yes. the things that you want to do. You couldn't do that kind of back in the, the Midwest and the yeah. South. <laughs> it's know? tough. It's yeah, tough. It is. So <laughs> the 10-year-old uh, Donovan, what, what, was, what was he like? 
He was, uh, you know, just a regular kid, wanted to just do what his friends was doing, hang mm -hmm. out. Uh, when I was 10, I actually did a play. Did you really? Yeah, yeah. I did How'd a, that go over with your friends? I did. Um, I mean, it was in the summertime, so that, you know. Yeah, okay. It was during a time where they didn't know, but, um, yeah. I, <laughs> they I mean, didn't I know. <laughs> I didn't tell them. I didn't. Yeah, it was no social media back then. Yeah, so right, I, I right. I couldn't tweet about it. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, I was just having fun, playing sports, playing baseball, football, mm -hmm. just doing what kids do. So that first time that you did a play, what yeah. what what did you play? What role? I was in this play called The Killer Mockingbird. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I don't know, I was just this little black kid that just threw a newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. No, it's kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was just a, a, like a kid that just threw a newspaper in front of the hmm. um, in front of the house. I didn't have any lines, but I just needed a kid at the time, and right. I was available. And I was like, you know, I'll, I'll give it a try. Did you ever think years later that this is what you would be doing? Not at all. No, I had. I didn't know what I wanted to do back then. I was playing sports, but yeah, I, I wouldn't thinking. If you know, I went back then, he would have told me that I would have been like, you're like you know, you're, cr you're crazy, <laughs> man. You're crazy. <laughs> so you know, I, I as I was, you know, grew up in the Midwest. Uh, right. I I was a track, I guess, what you quote quote star. I was you know shot put champion, oh, cool. you know all this stuff, yeah. full scholarships. I played football. We did well. We won state. You know, okay. in my but. I wasn't a huge like that wasn't my sport. Okay. It's football. I mean, how did you know that that was your sport? How did you know that that was something that you just wanted to pursue as a career? Well, I mean, first, I mean, my dad was coaching before I was playing. Oh, okay. So okay. I was that like helps. seven, eight, just running around. I saw him coaching, so it kind of just gave me gave me the bug, and he finally let me play when I was old enough. <laughs> And then I just, you know, I just, I just loved the game, and it was, it, it got us closer together, got us spending time, oh, that's and great. bonding, and I didn't, I didn't have, um, I didn't have a brother, you know, I didn't have brother siblings growing up. Are you the only child? I have a sister, but, oh, okay. but at that time it was just me, mm -hmm. and um, and 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 that, playing sports, playing on a team, I had thirty brothers, you know, right. thirty different brothers, and um, it was just, you know, and then after that, you know, I got to high school, I started mm -hmm. getting recruited. That's when I was like, okay, you know, maybe, maybe I'm. Decent, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, maybe I'm good enough to play at the next level. So, well, you know, I going back and looking the a lot of the football people I worked, you know, worked out with and played with. I mean, there's some egos. I couldn't imagine you thinking that you might be good enough. Did you? I mean, did you say, "Listen, I'm good"? Back then, uh, eventually. I mean, there's just so many. I mean, California is a we're known for a lot of good athletes, right. and there's a lot of different high schools. Um, we don't. We just starting to get you know state champions when I was playing. But um, but I, I was just playing just for fun. I didn't right. you know, I didn't know anything about you know I get a scholarship to go to college or go to mm -hmm. NFL. I was just playing just because I just enjoyed it and to get out the house and you right. know, hang around <laughs> hang around my boys right. and you know talk some stuff. So. so in college, how did that go? I mean, you, you played in college. How long yeah. did you play? Yeah, I played um, from 08 to twelve. Uh, so all four years? Yeah, all four years. I registered in my first year. I got a full ride scholarship. Wow. So, yeah, that was a blessing. What that college? Was good. UCLA, right, oh, down, good right down the street. Go Bruins out I there. I know. That's from a... my Bruins, yeah. So it was fun. I had a good time. Uh, met, still have some lifelong friends. I, I call brothers for life. And I have to say, you know, uh, where a lot of these parents, you know, they don't want their kids playing sports. I mean, yeah, there there can be injuries, but you can yeah. you can do injuries anywhere. I'm playing yes, out in the yard, yes. but I do believe that it does build um, a brothership, sisterhood uh, with other people that you may not with your family, you know, your regular family, blood family. So I think that is a, a great opportunity for kids, and you know, in college especially because you're building, you know. You're away from your family. You're starting to build yeah. new friendships, and so it, yeah, that's a good good place to to grow. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah I learned a lot of uh, life lessons at UCLA, mm -hmm. and you know, learned about comp you know competing and mm -hmm. time management and adversity. All, right. You know, a lot of a lot of stuff. <laughs> so w was there a was there a mentor like your dad? It sounds like your dad was kind of a mentor growing up yeah. because he was a coach. Once you went to college, who was your mentor? Uh, still, my dad, my my parents, um, my my coaches for sure. Mm -hmm. A lot of my a lot of my coaches, my position coach, and um, yeah, I mean, I was yeah, pretty much yeah, my coaches and right. you know, and um, some you know, some of my um, academic counselors too. Right. Oh, know. really? Yeah, that's good to hear. Yeah, I know. I mean, I I. I, I was not the best in academics. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'd be like. I hope you can play sports. That's pretty much what they did to me. Yes. But uh, but I have to say my coach in college was somebody that really believed in me. Yeah. Uh, that 
push me to the limits to where I thought, oh, like, I can't do this anymore. But yet he was there to kind of build me back up. Did you have a particular coach? You said your, was it your? Yeah, me and my, my coach Angus McClure. And also um, one of my old coaches, his name was Clark Lee. He used to he used to get me in the, I, th- I used to have to come in his office six o'clock in the morning oh God. to read, you know, to yeah, read, do, do my homework. And, um, you know, he just kind of, he really, like you said, just believed in me because I, mm-hmm. I was at a time where, I was, you know, messing around, immature, had to grow up, and I mean, you're he could have, yeah, yeah, I was young, you know, but he could have easily, like, they could have easily just let me stray off and mm-hmm. lose my scholarship and kick mm-hmm. me out of school, but he really wanted to see me do well, and he believed in me, right. and seeing that, I was like, you know what, I got to start believing in myself now. Four years of college, and then yes. I see that you had a chance with Oakland Raiders. So what happened, yeah. I mean, so tell us the process of, you know, college is ending, and yeah. now it's like, okay, now what? What how, what was that process of moving from college to trying out for the Raiders? Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was it was different because it's really, you know, I was learning, you know, at that age that um, there's no you know manuscript or mm-hmm. how does life work, right? So I was yeah. kind of just going with the flow, but uh, I was get I talked to a couple agents, so I signed with an agent, start training. Um, for the for the pro for my pro day because I didn't mm-hmm. get invited to the combine. Hmm. So every uh, what's the combine? Combine is in uh, Indianapolis oh. where all the top people in the nation that's right. supposed to get drafted. Oh, they go yeah, work yeah, out there. Yeah, that's yeah, when they yeah. do the forty and yeah. the um, interviews and all that yeah. all that stuff. But but they only it's only like so many players and then the players that don't get invited they get they do pro day at your university. Mm-hmm. So excuse me, I was training for that. And pro day came, then you know the draft came, didn't get drafted, and then Oakland called and said we want you to come up to our trial for uh, it's like a three day right. mini camp trial for rookies. So I was like, you know, okay, this is what I wanted. Uh, so I pretty excited. Up, yeah, I was excited. Yeah, I mean, this is what I've been mean, wanting since yeah. I was a kid, and have a, you know, all I want, all I wanted was a chance. That's all I. Right. So I was asking for was an opportunity. So I went up there, did my best. After the three days, coach brought us all in, you know, said thanks, but no thanks. So, wow. Yeah. It's kind of like the American Idol. You're like, no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, man. Yeah. But, um, you know, it was a good experience. I had fun, enjoyed it, you know, still thankful for the right. opportunity. And, yeah, came came home, and that's when reality, the real world hit me like, man, you know, you got to start. Now what? Yeah, bills was coming and grown-up stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I kind of, you know, yeah. I kind of had to, um, you know, let football go. But, I did, you know, I gave it the best I could, yeah. and. At the end of the day, I went to college, got my degree. So that's what really was your degree in? In history. Oh, yeah. I saw that you love. You know, I'm a big World War II fan. Also. Okay. I, I anything like Civil War. Yes. WW1, WW2, yeah, all that. Yeah. I I can sit there and watch documentaries all day long yeah. about that stuff. What What is it about history that you love? I just well, I, was, I mean, growing up, I didn't get to travel a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, playing sports oh, in school makes sense. So that was my way just to learning about, you know, what was going on in the world and, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of stuff that happened before my time. Because they say, you just say history repeats itself. <laughs> so We're yeah. seeing it right now. <laughs> exactly. So it was just my way of just learning. Yeah. It was just, a, you know, it's a big world out here. I feel yeah. like sometimes you just, you stuck in your, wherever you're from, your town, your city, mm-hmm. and you just think that's it, but you forget, like, this is just, yeah, we're just this state, tiny. This, you know, yeah. it's just America. There's a lot of other stuff right. going on. Is now I see he says World War II. What what was it about World War II that you really kind of honed on and like studied more about? Yeah, I don't know. It was just a crazy time, just us going to war and stuff with Germany and Japan and mm-hmm. you know even in America. Just it was just it was just crazy. I just couldn't imagine myself being that time because I probably would have yeah. you know had it got drafted to go to the war and I would have been. Oh my god, yeah. I you know, one imagine. day you just chilling. Next thing you got to go across you know the mm-hmm. water and you got to go to war so yeah well but, there was 70 million people died in yeah, world war ii or something yeah, like that close was, to it yeah it was That's, crazy you crazy. think about 70 million people that is a country that is like yeah. a whole huge country that's yeah. not just a small country that's a huge country huge country and so even germany germany's huge country listening to one you know one man like that's yeah that's crazy but oh, it just it, it just interests me all you know so uh period. no I I like I said I totally in, in the same way I I could re- I'd rather watch History Channel or you yeah. know something like that every yeah, I day. love I love war movies like do you what yeah. was one of your favorites like Saving Private Ryan that's a good one and, um, that's a good one Black Hawk Down I think it was Black Hawk Down yeah yeah uh, 
yeah, just you know, any any all war movies like that. So if you could go back and any of these war movies, which yeah. what 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 which one would you want to be in? And Glorious Bastards. Oh, that was sure. a good. That was for good. Sure. Yes, <laughs> I love Quentin yeah. Tarantino. Yeah, no, he he has a way of putting controversy and like M- pushing the human. limit. <laughs> yeah, it makes it human, but pushes it right to the limit. Yeah. Maybe even over the edge, just to just to make people like, oh my god, I can't yeah. believe he just did that exactly. or said that. It was. I mean, his movies are great, and yeah. that that was a great movie. Yeah, I love I love that movie. Yeah. So okay, so you know. Oakland Raiders didn't work out. Yeah. And you're like, okay, you said bills are coming in. Now you're like, what the hell am I going to do? Yeah, I exactly. see you said you got through a little depression. Yeah, I just was um, just going just going through, you know, just life like everybody else. But I really, I didn't, I didn't set myself up like I should have probably in yeah. college with networking and mm-hmm. making sure I had, I didn't, I didn't really have a plan B. And I just dedicated my life so much to football I was really banking mm-hmm. on it to work and for it to get taken away I was kind of you know I was, I was a little down right but I saw I got motivated by some of my friends and started talking to some alumni and people from my college and you know they kind of just got me up and going again and I just was just thinking outside the box I, I didn't want I don't want to just label myself to do anything I just right. was really like what do I want to do and that's gonna make me happy Cause that, I mean, to think about it, going, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going through this moment, you know, never thought of acting before. Yeah. Who said, you should be an actor? I mean, I mean, that's kind of random. I mean, yeah. I, even though you're in L.A., but yeah. it's still, you know, it's still fo- random. Yeah, still like a football like, player, you know. Yeah, really. So what? How did who suggested or suggested or what did you see that motivated you to want to go to acting? Well, I actually, I went back to my alma mater and asked my coaches. I was like, you know, a coach. Like I need some help. Um, I was I was doing part time jobs, but mm-hmm. I just needed some some more money just to do the things I wanted to do. Right. So I, I thought they was gonna like have me working at an office job or you know something <laughs> right. in the mail room. Right. Right. But they actually put me on a commercial agency. So I started. Yeah, wow. Yeah. I, I showed up to the agency and I'm I'm still thinking I'm like doing do. a regular job. So where's the mail room? <laughs> yeah. And they're like, no, you're on camera. Yeah. So then they got me going to auditions like the next week, and I was doing I was I started off doing background like commercials, hmm. and it was fun. I was like in full pads and everything and hitting. Oh, so this was making, a football like a football. Yeah, commercial yeah, yeah. They was looking have. for they was looking for athletes for mm-hmm. the commercials and hmm. and I kind of came in at a good time too because a lot of the a lot of people on the jobs I was meeting they, they were like oh like thirty in their thirties kids, mm-hmm. yeah, families, wives, and wasn't a lot of people my age so. I think they was looking for, you know, newer young young faces, right. and then I was doing that. Was auditioning for other commercials, so I started figuring out the business. I was like, okay, this is kind of cool, better than what I was doing before. Right. So um, <laughs> right. And then, and then I just got an email. My, I didn't even tell my I didn't even tell my coaches. I was like, you know, what, coach, if you see any other opportunities, let me know. They just got an email from the cast directors of Ballers, and then I I literally got an email on my phone, and yeah, I just That's I just followed pretty it pretty quick. It. Yeah, I mean it was I mean it was a it was a it was a process, you know. It was like, yeah. you know, 3 months after I started. <laughs> but 3 I'm I have to look around going 3 months. That's pretty quick. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so cuz so how long from from today until yes. you started acting? What how long has it been? It's been it well from that day it was so it was summer of 13 and I didn't I didn't start acting till January of 2014. So, that so was two like, years, two and a half years. No, it was like um, it was like what no, August to January. What's that like? It's almost four months. F- like five months. Yeah. So yeah, it was like five months. I don't like I had to audition for three months straight for the part because we did the pilot right. in 14. Oh wow! So it's so you've been working with this project a while. Yeah, then. I've been working with this for three years. Wow. Yeah. So I've been wow. I, I've been acting for three years now. But um, I mean, that must. I mean, to think about you're saying you're kind of doing a lot of background work. Yeah, I did Actu- to actually get a, a speaking part. Yeah, on ballers. That was was it. Nervous? Was it nerve wracking? A little bit. Yeah, I de- definitely. My first when I did the pilot because I did the yeah. table read first. Yeah, and then when I did the table read, that was that was cool. You were just literally like right here at a table, just right. reading the script. But yeah, when I got on set in the pilot, I was yeah, I definitely was nervous. I was like freaking out. <laughs> right. Out. But um but I just in my mind, I was just like, you know what? Like, you know, like this is a good opportunity. Just take, you know, take advantage of it. Do right. the best you can and whatever happens, happens. So, you know, let God let God take care mm-hmm. of the rest. Just do do the best you could do. I mean, that's <laughs> that's what I learned in ball with my coaches. Just do right. your job and and let it, you know, rely on everybody else. So. Cuz 
you know, in sport, any sports, as you know, your performance is going to change from game to game or event to event because you're not always going to be the best yeah. that day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you, you per- perseverance, you just keep going. Yeah, I just kept going. I mean, I definitely was freaking out a little bit, but, I mean, it happens. Did you get to do it with Tabor Reed with The, the Rock? Yeah, it was everybody at The Rock, oh Mark God. Wahlberg, wow, all I'll the like, cast. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I, thought I, was, I thought I was dreaming. I was like, this is ridiculous. I said, like, am I in a dream? Like, I'm all, yeah. I am feel like I was going to wake up. Like, this is going to not be true. But, right. But it was cool, though. I mean, er- Everybody reassured me that you you got the part mm-hmm. because they they saw some in you. You deserve it. Wasn't an accident. It wasn't a fluke. Wow, wow, good for you. You, you. you work for it, and yeah, like man, God is good. That's all I gotta right. say. God is good. Good for you. Now, so season one, you know, you're you, like anybody. You're starting to really, you know, cultivate your role. Yeah. Uh, as a Vernon, and so how has Vernon changed? You know, from day one until now, how how has you you've seen yourself change in that role? I uh, definitely. I mean, first season he was um, you know young and mature. It's like a lot of these players they get money and they, they mm-hmm. don't know what to do with it. They don't have. Any, and this is true. Yeah, yeah this is <laughs> I mean, true. This yeah, they true. don't they don't have any role models or it's not like oh my my uncle had you know my, I can look up to my uncle ask these questions. Like mm-hmm. I said, there's no like there's no manuscript or no anything to read or watch to, right. to tell you how to do these things. And a lot of times you have to just learn on the fly and learn from your mistakes. Mm. But I definitely see from the first day to now, he's growing up a little bit. I mean, first season he had all, he had all his family, everybody around. Right. This season you kind of just see him and Reggie, you know, his cousin, and it's just them two. So he definitely got rid of all the, the baggage he had before in first season. But he's still, he's still, he's still, still a little immature, still right. got to grow up. But uh, but he's trying. He's trying. He's right. trying to do the right thing. You can see that second season. He wants to tell the truth when he uh, tears his Achilles and he gets hurt. Mm. He doesn't want to lie. He doesn't. You know, Vernie's a good guy. He's he got a good heart. He's a he's a nice guy, and he's just, he wants to just do the right thing. Right. Even if it might cost him, right. <laughs> you know, his job or money. Yeah. But but I definitely see him growing up a little bit. But he just has to take it to the next level. He has to know that it's just it's not about him. So it's bigger than him in some in some points, and I and seeing him play paintball and right. do things, you gotta know you you can't do things like that anymore. You gotta, mm-hmm. especially you gotta you gotta team you the franchise player. You got this high contract. You gotta put your you, you gotta put yourself ahead. Uh, you put yourself before before you gotta put yourself ahead ahead of, ahead of others sometimes. Right. So. And so Donovan and Vernon, what are the similarities? Similarities. Uh, <laughs> Well, but I mean, good guy. Yeah, yeah, both, good, yeah, both yeah, good, guy. good guy. I mean, I definitely, if I was in the league, I want to take care of you know my people too, my parents. I wouldn't probably have a guy like Reggie around. Right. I would <laughs> right. think I want somebody how like LeBron has his team. Mm-hmm. He made him go to school, train, and you know get get the get the right get the right experience for the job. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I definitely see me and Vern. We we both young. Even with me and acting now, getting a lot of getting successful really fast, not knowing how to handle it, I don't know what to do, and mm-hmm. learning from our learning from our mistakes. So working with Mark and uh, The Rock yeah. or Dwayne, I guess whatever you want to call him, because he changes his name. From <laughs> uh, but watching them, because like I said, they were very similar steps as you of, yeah. of going from a sport or a, a musician to an actor, to watching them doing that what they do best now do you kind of just sit back and watch them especially when you're there Mm -hmm. watching this play out do you Mm -hmm. watch them of their skill and timing and because like the rock i'm surprised i i've always been surprised he has really good comedic timing which a lot of people don't have that so when you watch them what do you watch for i just watch i just see how they lead Mm -hmm. from me and like you said i'm just in the back just looking Kind of just watching how they do, how they attack things, mm-hmm. how they um, how they come to work, and I mean they're just so professional. And at the end of the day, uh, nobody's perfect. I think right. a lot of people they think you know they're perfect. They don't make mistakes. We're not one take wonders. Yeah, <laughs> not at all. They, we all make mistakes. They just don't let it. They don't get rattled. They just right. if they do make a mistake, they just say all right, whatever, brush it off. Let's do it again. Let's mm-hmm. keep going. Even and if they do do it good, they still got to keep going. Let's do it again over and over again. But they're definitely. Definitely hard workers, and they just show me that um, you'll get where you want to get. It just sometimes it takes some time. Yeah, but you just got to keep going after it and keep yeah. keep grinding, 
keep working hard and and also they're great people. They're 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 I don't I don't know if anybody could say that the the they don't want to work with them. They're oh easy, yeah. Yeah, they're easy to work with, never complain and you know, I think that that goes a long way with your career too. If you if you can be somebody that people want to work with, like that's good. No, it's totally. I mean, yeah. I've never heard any negative things about either one of them. So exactly, uh, which is again rare in Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, one thing you said when you when you were realized that uh, football wasn't going to work out for you, you said you didn't have a plan B. Yeah. Well, you know, acting's not the easiest. Is it there, isn't. So, do you have a plan B, saying that you know I'm gonna I'm giving my two hundred percent of being an actor. But are you trying maybe write, maybe you know direct, maybe? Um, well, I mean, is there other things that you're trying to do besides just acting? To- yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I've been reading, watching people, and they definitely say to make it in Hollywood, you gotta write, like mm-hmm. you gotta make your own content. So I'm looking, I'm looking at that. Uh, been meeting some people that are that are writers and mm-hmm. same my position, young people, and yeah, definitely looking into writing, producing one day. You know, maybe directing. I don't. Know. I want to do it all. At least, at least attempt it and yeah. see, see if it's for me. Doing. If it's if it's not, yeah. and so that way, when I look back, when I'm whatever age, and I'm like, you know what, I did, I did that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I liked it or I didn't like it. Instead of I'm the I wish way. I would I wish I would have did that. Yeah, I'm the same way. I I have to do everything. I I've, I've interviewed people like, no, I just want to be an actor. Uh, I don't want to do anything else. That's yeah, all I yeah. want to do. And then there's other people like, oh no, no, I want to be a writer, director, yeah. actor, singer, uh, you know, dancer, whatever. They just yeah. do it all, do yeah. it all. Um, but uh, is so. Is there any other projects you have coming up besides Ballers, or do you have? Yeah, other? no, um, right now not yet. Just we got picked up for season three, which is so, amazing. Which is yeah, which is amazing. God is good and. Just focusing on that. I just got an agent like two months ago. Really? Yeah, yeah. So wow, that's yeah, pretty good. Get, getting yeah. this far without an agent. I, I didn't have when I got the part. I didn't have anything. I didn't have an agent, manager, nothing. Just how did? Okay, tell me that real quick. How did you get the part without anything? Through my coaches. I'm, uh, my coaches how? got the email. Really? Through through the grace of God. I, I have no idea, honestly. Like through the that's God. Not God, God bless wow. me with all this, and yeah, he, like the cast records, they wanted football players to audition for the role. Huh. So I guess they just hit up universities, was seeing if anybody was interested, and I just thank thank God I checked my email hmm. that day and I didn't delete it. But, right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm just been slowly, slowly but surely building my team, and really, uh, really just attacking this full first, full force, and. Mm-hmm. Taking advantage of opportunity as best as I can. So, uh, with uh, you know the team that you have, which I, I mean Rogers and Cowens, they're amazing. <laughs> yeah, they are amazing. amazing. Yes, uh, but uh, it does make a big difference in in anything you do. You know, if if it's if you're uh, flipping hamburgers at a you know at a joint a burger joint, which is you know a you know well respected career if that's what you want to do but it's if you have the team around you you know management supports you and people that push you i mean you can grow in anything you do yeah um so but now that you're you know on television and you know and it's doing well and you're working with the rock and you know mark Wahlberg, what is what is your friends from college and and uh (laughs) What do they say to you now? Like, oh, oh my God! <laughs> it is like yeah, I can't yeah, I mean, believe you know this is great. Yeah, they're all they're all happy for me, proud of me. They they just they can't believe it because I didn't really say anything to anybody right. during the whole process. I I kept it to myself. I even didn't tell my parents some stuff because I just didn't even tell your parents. I mean, I did tell them, but I didn't tell them. <laughs> you know, you can't tell You're your like parents. Like second everything. season of yeah, ballers, <laughs> and they're like, oh, by the way, because <laughs> at the end of the day, I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know what was happening. Okay. I didn't want to be like, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. It did then, not happen. Then the edits come out, and you just you, you know you're nowhere to be seen. Been there, done that. <laughs> yeah, been there, done that. <laughs> but uh, but I was real low key about it, and a lot of my friends. I mean, I'm just a low key type person anyway. Mm-hmm. But a lot of my friends, they was they was like freaking out because they like they like is that that look that looks like everybody called me DC like in college so they like that look like looks like DC like I don't know and then <laughs> they saw my name like a lot of you know it, t- it took a, it took people a while to like realize it or I guess even believe it but right. for the most part all my friends they're, they're happy for me and they're just they're just happy that I'm doing something I love to do. Good for you and yeah. I and I see that you love to inspire others. Yeah. Uh, so have you ever thought about? 
going around and doing like a motivational speaking to like high schools and yeah yeah I've been colleges. doing it I'm doing a little bit I I talked to a, a school school early when I got back and I I do a lot of stuff through uh, through my college UCLA mm-hmm. anytime I can go back and talk to you know my teammates or undergrads but yeah I would like to because um I mean I feel like we all got a story no, and we all we do. you want to tell tell you know tell and hopefully motivate some people. And uh, I'm doing more. I'm doing more community service now since um, since we're not going back to film for a little bit. So yeah, I'm definitely doing more, being more active in the community, and you know, letting people know that you can go after your dreams out here. It's, Amen it's, to that. It's possible. Amen to that. I, yes. I, I believe. I always tell people I've done this almost for nine years, and I said, if I can do this, anybody can. Because yeah, I'm just it. a small town, C average Man. student, a student that uh, you know it, most people probably would have never thought. Exactly. But it, it is hard work. It is hard work. Yeah. Uh, and I think that was the work ethic, and you know my family pushed and believed in me, and, and the same with you. So, absolutely. But it's been a pleasure to have you on. I can't wait to maybe have you back for season three. And hey, let's uh, do it. Let's see, do it. See how you know Donovan keeps or. Vernon, Vernon keeps growing and and uh, yeah. bigger, hopefully a bigger role, and uh, you know maybe Rock will retire and you'll take over. Hey. There we go. <laughs> you never know. Tony said it. There, I, right there. <laughs> Throw it out in the universe. Let's uh, do it. That's right. All right. So Donovan Carter, you can go to DC softly. Uh, so fly. I did so, that early. Um, Why did yeah, I, I so keep fly. when I look at it, it mm-hmm. looks like softly ki- killing them softly. Yeah, DC L- so fly ninety. Is that the year you were born? I was born in eighty nine. I, I hate you. <laughs> 80s baby. Yeah, I was a 69 baby, so <laughs> thanks make, for making me feel old. Uh, but uh, we, it's a pleasure to have you on. And, uh, Thank you. Pleasure check out H- HBO uh, Ballers. Uh, and uh, tell us your social media, all that good stuff. Yeah, um, like you said, Twitter, uh, DC Soulfly 90 Instagram and Snapchat at Donovan W. Carter, and Facebook also. So please follow me. Follow what I'm doing. Please do, please <laughs> go do. Bruins, go Bruins. Well, I like I said, this is it's this is what I love about my job to learn people's history, to, you know, their story, and to hopefully inspire others. Yes, and uh, you definitely have inspired me and others. So please keep doing what you're doing. You too. God bless everybody out there. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we have more on Universal Broadcasting Networks on air with Tony Sweet. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Are you Vin Diesel? No, I'm bigger and better looking. I'ma get that, get that, get that, get that. Joe and I have complete confidence that we're gonna go down as one of the greatest of all time. It's a million dollar suite, super Brazilian supermodels now a million dollar feet. Did a million in a week. There's Andre, the best financial manager in town. In this business, you don't cross the biggest guy, especially when it's him. We're gonna get you paid. I want what I deserve. You talking about money or respect? This game is the same thing. You created a disaster. Here's the thing. I'm too big to fail, Spence. Drinks are on me. Tip the waiter. All about the money, money, money. All about the money, money, money.
with On Air with Tony Sweet, only on Universal Broadcasting Network. All right, we're back. This is On Air with Tony Sweet. I'm Tony Sweet, and I have sitting in because... Carla did not show up today. Thanks, Carla. Uh, she is, I don't know where she is at. So we have Kurt Carlson is in the house. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Kurt! Woo. Did you just boo? Or? No, I said boo. Oh, I thought you said boo. Woo. Uh, well, I'm excited to have Kurt with me. He's going to help me waste some time. Of course, we have I'm about always down for <laughs> yeah. wasting time. Yeah, you're good at wasting time, Kurt. I, I do it enough here at work. <laughs> right, Why not? That's I'm right. You get to work with me. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we we just had a great show uh, with uh, our wonderful guest um, uh, Donovan Carter from HBO's Ballers. Have you ever seen that show? I have not. Uh, there's only one show I watch on HBO. And, what is it? And that's uh, Game of Thrones. So. You know what? I have not even watched one season or one episode of Game of Thrones. I want to, but it's I feel like I'm so far behind. I don't know if I, I can I get caught up. I have all five seasons if you want to borrow them. On Do Blu- you really? On Blu-ray. I can bring them in. You can watch them here. No, it's, no, then I won't do any work. Yeah. <laughs> then, it it, like it do really work is a commitment. Like if you want to watch but it's this good. show, yeah, it's a, it's amazing. Is I, it I can't getting ex- better? Starting oh, to yeah. drop off? No, it's no? it's they're they How actually delayed the last season um, to really? they need more time, I guess, to write it or something. They so didn't it's think not it going to come enough out or something. Well, it's the last the last book because each season's supposed to be one book. Oh, so, so it, this is it? Yeah, the, they only have technically, and the, George R. R. Martin has even written the last two books. So the the last season is actually going to be split up into two so half So they can seasons. try to prolong it to maybe he'll finish a book or something? Uh, he, the <laughs> way he writes, it's like a turtle, you know, on a keyboard. It, right. it, it takes him forever to finish anything because that's just the way he is. So but how long has he been working on these books? If it Over takes 10 it? years. Oh, wow. It's been a long time. Wow. So, um but yeah, the last one each season is normally uh, ten episodes. The mm-hmm. last season is going to be, I think, s- five and six episodes. So there's the last two seasons. Oh, so they have really. Yeah, so they're just yeah, they're, just they're just drawing it out. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. And HBO, I, from what I read, is in talks of writing a, a prequel um, se- uh, season that takes up because the whole point is there's a rebellion or whatever, and it's supposed to be that prequel to it that leads up to the rebellion. I, I mean, I seriously, I know I would love it. I'm just, it makes me nervous because I'm so far behind. But I, mean, I know I binge watch all the time, like yeah, Netflix e- and stuff. So Each episode's about an hour long, a little bit over because it's HBO, so they don't have commercials or so anything, it's gonna so they take can me. go whatever. Mm, about three weeks? So, yeah, so uh, mm. five seasons. Um, and they just came out with season six. I don't have season six, obviously, because it's, right. it just came out. It's not on Blu-ray yet, but so that's 60 hours, technically. Now, do they... Do they lose a lot of like characters? Do they kill a, oh, a lot God. of characters off? Oh, yeah. Is it people that you wouldn't think would be? No, it's main off? characters. Oh, so it is. Yeah, it, it's actually you don't know. And it's not like survive. a year later they come back. You know, like oh, sorry, we were kidding. Uh, I, I don't want to spoil anything you don't for have you. To spoil, yeah. You won't spoil it for me. Well, I'm, or everyone else. Oh, okay. It's like, <laughs> it, so that's possibly yes. It's not. It's like it, a soap opera where. Uh, Yes, you know, and gets no. killed in a car accident, and it burns. You know, to the you know the car burns to a crisp, and then like two years later, like oh, that was that was a twin brother that would. It, it, it's not like that. No, oh, okay. ninety nine percent of the deaths are permanent. Oh, okay, you know, it, some of them, you know, you thought they died, but they never actually died on screen, so you mm-hmm. don't know if they're dead or not. So they're trying to save it until oh, is that person alive or dead? And there's some characters that have disappeared either through whatever means, not death or anything, and that hasn't shown back. That up may. Yet. That could come back later on. Okay, that would make sense. But so, I mean, especially if it's a popular character, you wouldn't think they would get rid of people. Well, see, that's the thing is uh, the the author he just likes to kill off main characters. So that's he, funny. Um, I, he's been described as uh, uh, America's version of uh, Tolkien, the guy who made Lord of the Rings. Right. So he's, I mean, th- these these books are massive and they're crazy. And did you read the book? I have the first few books. I haven't had time to read them, unfortunately. So no, I, I, I've read I think half of the first book. Oh really? Yeah. Um, See, my that's the thing is I, I'm I, I'm not a reader. I wish I was. I'm, and well, I, I try and it just the, I fall asleep. The, the problem when I was reading the first book is that he has so it's it's a completely different world. Mm-hmm. So it's all different, uh, like names, mm-hmm. places, people. So you're you're looking at the the if you don't know anything, I haven't watched any of the, the TV show or haven't. You know, the first time reading it and, and grossing yourself I'm into this. Mm, okay, go ahead. 
<laughs> it's just like, okay, so, you know, Robert Baratheon from King's Landing, you know, right. from, you know, the Stormlands is doing this. And it's just different names in different places. And you have no idea what's going on is the problem. Hmm. So I was reading this book after watching only the first season. And I'm like, I don't know who this is. Like that obscure person that was in this, you know, the second episode that is on camera for like 15 seconds is right. named. He has a whole backstory. He has right. everything. So you're just, I, this is too much. Well, um, if anybody's, you know, like on the Facebook Live or something, tell me what you think about Game of, Game of Thrones. I know uh, there's a lot of people. My sister oh, loves it. I, I, My sister I love it. it. I, I can't wait for the next season, to be honest with you. It, it, it's, it has so much hype and... There's just so much that potentially that can happen. Well, I, I I will eventually watch it when I know I can sit down and just watch them. Not all in one day. Yeah. But I want to watch it. Well, see, the thing is, once you get started with them, it's it's kind of like potato chips. It's can't oh, eat just one. Yeah, you, you just got to keep going, and and most of the episodes end on cliffhangers. So of course, well, yeah, it, especially that type of show, they don't yeah. want to just like and just ends it exactly. You're like, well, so you're why just should like, I even listen? Well, to what them? happened to that person? What's going on? Well, what was I remember interviewing a couple people from Game of Thrones. I don't remember because it's been a long time ago. So, but I know one was a, a young girl. Uh, crap. But and, and there also a little person on there. Yeah, uh, Peter Dinklage. Is he still on there? Oh yeah. Oh, so he did. He's not gotten killed off. Not yet. Not yet. Well, I, I mean, I, I wonder if these people come in and know that they're going to get killed off or not until they. <laughs> I actually read. Uh, I remember reading something, and it was the author was at a, uh, one of the shoots, and he was at a table eating lunch, and everyone at that table was characters he had killed off. Oh, he really? Had technically put out of a job. So, and they're like, have a knife like yeah, under just, the table, like, go ahead. Oh, oh yeah, I killed. And, and he, he's <laughs> even said, I feel bad for these actors because I've killed a character off, and they're, they're done on the show. Especially because that's a good show to stay oh, yeah. on. It, it's actually one of the highest budget TV shows. So I'm sure on, they get paid well, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure they get paid well enough. Mm. For, look for good on camera, Kurt. Look at that. Um, you know, well, you know, it's just I'm always behind the board. That's true. You know, you never want until to I, have me on until camera until I need you. Yeah, exactly. Hey, come in here. Hey, we need. I need you, Kurt. But I say that all the time, anyway. Do that and rub your feet. <laughs> it's not going to happen, Tony. It's Why not? Just not. I have pretty feet. Every every day. <laughs> every, every day. Well, not every day. About. Every other. Every other day. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but, uh, well, Kurt and I usually like to, uh, we only have like four minutes left, so we really don't have much time, but we usually like to uh, pull some YouTube videos. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I am, uh, don't think we have time. But no. I know we're one of these days we're going to do that again, just have a show, and we're just going to find YouTube videos I, that I we're going to play. Probably find, I don't know. Yeah. I don't have time. Uh, but Kurt is going to be gone next week because he's going to Disney World. Yes. Did you win the Super Bowl? Yeah, I'm going to Disney World. Disney World. D- Disney World. Disney World. Yay! Yay. <laughs> ah, I'm Mickey. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 oh. It's, I'm Mickey. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, oh, oh, oh. say something. Oh, I'm Mickey. No, that's not. Do we have a problem here? Oh, oh, oh. There we go. Oh, oh, oh. Do you do that? <laughs> do you walk around Disney World and do that? No. Yeah, they'd be I, like, I get kicked out. Call security. Yeah. yeah. Disney police is no joke. No, they take that serious. No, they they, they do. I would yeah. I wouldn't mess with them at all. Now with uh, because of the, the whole, gator, yeah, the oh. gator and the whole terrorism. Oh thing. yeah, I'm sure. Because uh, originally, I guess after that pulse thing, that there was um, hints at that people were trying to sneak stuff into Disney World. Really? Uh, and that they, I guess, they got stopped or something happened where they couldn't wow. get them in. But originally, that was their plan. So they've beefed up security there pretty bad. <laughs> like, you, you have to go through metal detectors and everything else now. See, that's sad. I know, and it totally that's takes sad. you out of that, because well, you're immersed family in that. Family and that fantasy. And, yeah. I yeah. want to go there. I want to have fun. I I, I don't want to think about, you know, that oh, there's potential terrorist or someone's bringing stuff in. Yeah. can hurt something. I mean, when I had a season pass for Disneyland, I saw someone left a bag right over by where we were oh, eating. God. And security came out. They had the dog, the bomb-sniffing dogs came out. Everything was coming out because this person just left their bag there. Wow. Like, this is this is horrible. And were you scared? I wasn't. I just assumed someone had left their bag. You should have just yelled, it's sticking! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then run. <laughs> you know, it, it's funny. That would have been funny. No. They have signs that were saying you can't bring any toys that look like guns, swords, or anything else. Well, that else makes sense. Into the park, but they sell those in the park. 
Guns? Uh, toy swords and stuff like that. Well, toy swords, you, you yeah. know, the pirates toy, of the Caribbean, and they have the the Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters that you can buy there. So they have toy guns. That so they said like you a, can't bring them in. It's, it, like it's a porn p- thing. Yeah. Astro. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah. uh, it's like going to a movie theater. You can't bring your own food. Oh, true. You know, it's like they make a lot of freaking money. In yeah, because they you know jack up the price and. Oh yeah. Yeah, because I, when I remember when I was a kid, it was you know like twelve bucks or ten bucks to get in. Now it's like what a hundred it, it, or last more. Last I checked, it was ninety nine dollars. It's probably gone up since then. But per was, per park per day per per park. Well, one park is ninety nine dollars. You get one admission. I think a park hopper. Is one fifty, and then you can go with the two, same day. And then if you want different parks, different days, you know it's it's even more. Damn. Well, I'm gonna miss you and have a good time. Oh. Well, I, I don't know what you're gonna do without me here. Thanks. I don't either. <laughs> Probably kill somebody. <laughs> well, <laughs> but whatever. Yeah. Uh, it's just a person. All right. Well, we love you guys. Kurt, thanks for sitting in. Carla, I have no idea where you are. So, <laughs> so, but we want to uh, thank our uh, guests today, Donovan Carter. Watch him on Ballers on HBO. Uh, please uh, support him. He sounds like a great guy. So I hope you guys enjoy that. And we'll see you next week right here on On Over Tony Sweet on Universal Broadcasting Network. This has been On Air with Tony Sweet. Don't worry, there's more online. Search On Air with Tony Sweet on iTunes for fast shows and exclusive behind-the-scenes content. On Air with Tony Sweet every Wednesday and Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. Pacific. Right here on UBNRadio.com.